Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Taliban forces obtain the Afghan capital Kabul. Thousands of Afghanistans are planning to flee their country as the Taliban gains control. Afghan nationals cling onto a U.S. military airplane and fall to their death in a final desperate attempt to flee the country. The U.N. Security Council has planned an emergency meeting on Afghanistan on Monday, August 16th. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has called an early federal election for September 20th. President Joe Biden faces heavy criticism for his previous projections about Afghanistan. In Haiti, 1,297 are dead and 5,700 are injured after a 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit the city of Lake Hai. On Sunday, August 15th, Taliban forces reached Kabul. Currently, the Taliban controls more than two-thirds of the country. As fighting and human rights violations continued, thousands of Afghanistans have fled their homes. The Taliban has declared that the war in Afghanistan is over while President Ashraf Ghani has fled the country. Ashraf Ghani has said the Taliban have won and are now responsible for the honor, property and self-preservation of their countrymen. Currently, the Taliban has taken over the presidential palace. In related news, since the Taliban has taken over most of Afghanistan, many are trying desperately to leave the country. Though the Taliban stated they want a peaceful transition, thousands have flooded the streets of Kabul and emptied their life savings to try and flee the country. These people flocked the capital's airport on Monday. Global News writes, Videos circulating on social media showed hundreds of people running across the tarmac as U.S. soldiers fired warning shots in the air. One showed a crowd pushing and shoving its way up a staircase, trying to board a plane with some people hanging off the railings. Even more surprising events unfolded at the Kabul airport. In particular, as desperate Afghan nationals tried to flee the nation, some individuals clung onto a departing U.S. military plane. Rather than stalling departure, the U.S. plane took off while Afghan civilians held onto the wheels of the plane. Footage of these individuals falling to their death at high altitudes has shocked the international community. In fact, some have called this video the defining images of war and have said that this situation will likely be remembered as one of the most shameful moments in Western history. As the Taliban has taken hold of the capital, the UN plans to hold an emergency meeting this Monday. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is expected to speak on current recent developments in Afghanistan, which he has reportedly claimed is spinning out of control. A Taliban spokesperson has said that the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan will soon be declared and that they do not want to be isolated from the rest of the world. However, many of the UN member states have spoken out against the Taliban, signaling that they will likely not recognize the Taliban as a legitimate government. Despite this, it remains to be seen whether the UN will recognize the insurgents as a legitimate power or how they will deal with the group in general. The international community must unite to make sure that Afghanistan is never again used as a platform or safe haven for terrorist organizations. In other news, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has officially announced that the parliament will dissolve for another election on September 20th. Opposition party leaders, including Aaron O'Toole and Jagmeet Singh, have criticized Trudeau for this decision. They have suggested that the election is not only selfish, but also reflects a power-hungry decision on the part of the Trudeau government. In particular, allegations against the Trudeau government revolve on the notion that the early election is a vehicle for the Liberal Party to win a majority government while they are ahead in the polls, and Canadians are facing the unprecedented challenges that have come from the COVID-19 pandemic. Will Trudeau's gamble pay off? Or can Canadians expect a new government? Because I'm focused on our real plan. I'm focused on the path forward with Canadians. So to Canadians, I'm asking you to vote for real progressive leadership, for strong health care, for affordable homes, for a clean and protected environment. Make your voice heard, have your say, and together, let's move forward. Turning now to President Biden and Afghanistan. 
As the Atlantic wrote, there's plenty of blame to go around for the 20-year debacle in Afghanistan. Much of the blame, it seems, is falling on President Joe Biden. Many have pointed out that the Biden administration did not adequately address warning signs in Afghanistan and did not act with the urgency that the situation demanded. In this way, they have left tens of thousands of Afghans destined to a horrible fate. Meanwhile, Biden National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan stated that Biden stands by his decision to pull out troops in Afghanistan. Moreover, Biden is currently meeting with advisors in order to address his previous predictions about stability in Afghanistan. Many wonder, how could the president get predictions of Afghanistan so wrong? Look, we spent over a trillion dollars over 20 years. We trained and equipped with modern equipment over three 100,000 Afghan forces. And Afghan leaders have to come together. We lost thousands, lost death and injury, thousands of American personnel. They've got to fight for themselves, fight for their nation. The United States, I'll insist we continue to keep the commitments we made of providing close air support, making sure that their Air Force functions and is operable, res resupplying their forces with food and equipment, and paying all their salaries. But they've got to want to fight. They have outnumbered the Taliban, and I'm getting daily briefings. I think there is still a possibility you have a, a significant new Secretary of Defense, our equivalent of Secretary of Defense in Afghanistan, Bushmullah Khan, who's a serious fighter. I think they're beginning to realize they've got to come together politically at the top. And uh, but we're going to continue to keep our commitment. But I do not regret my decision. On Saturday, August 14th, a deadly earthquake hit Haiti. The earthquake reportedly left 7,000 homes in shambles and by Sunday, August 15th, left 1,297 people dead and 5,700 people injured. With the hospitals in the area at full capacity, many victims of this natural disaster can do nothing more than set up camp on the streets of Lake High and hope not to succumb to their injuries. Some victims have expressed discontent at the government of Haiti, who they claim is not helping the injured. Unfortunately, the situation may be exacerbated by the expected arrival of Tropical Depression Grace, which will bring with it heavy winds, landslides, downpour, and flooding on Monday evening. That's all for today. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Ava Blackwell.